Hi, Cesarine here with another video, and this is for Penance Brand, and it's going to be a collab with Manny. It's a super, super strong build. A lot of people are saying that this build feels like it has an additional zero in addition to what it should have. And uh, yeah, it also is bugged negatively in a few ways, so it seems like something that might get bug fixed in our favor and become even stronger, if anything. But definitely not something we're worried about getting nerfed. To start off, let's have Manny show a little bit about how the build performs against bosses and some content. Hey guys, Manny here, and I'll show you what I think is the coolest thing about this build, and that's how easy it is to boss on this character. So uh, when in uber shape right now, I'm going to jump right in. Pretty much all we got to do is activate our Hatred Blessing, place down some brands, and uh, as soon as the boss becomes vulnerable, we can curse him as well. And these brands are going to last 10 seconds. So uh, we don't really have to do anything other than wait for the boss to die. Unfortunately, he's immune already. So we're going to try to dodge these. Alright, so brand is applied. Curse is applied. You can click DPS flask now and just wait. Don't have to be on screen either, the boss is just gonna die over there somewhere. I said not to use a ref right now, just to, to keep the DPS a bit lower so it doesn't instantly die. Oh, there we go. This build is not necessarily a great starter. Um, I have actually leveled with Penance Brand myself. I did have level unique, so I'm gonna add that to the POB and show how I leveled. And honestly, it was insane. Even with leveling gear, I have never deleted bosses such as this and this is because it basically just ramps in damage that makes it not a great clearing ability but you know compared to like armageddon brand which is my favorite way to level templars this was still like absolutely a blast and it didn't feel bad at all and uh, as you can see in the background here this is leveling footage of me just going through the campaign and things are dying pretty fast but if you've been playing something like corrupting fever with crazy map clear it's not going to have that level of map clear so we are using Path of Building for this guide. If you aren't familiar with it, uh, we do have a guide on how POB works. And uh, I will be adding a leveling section here, but this is a uh, POB that Manny made. And we have an end game one and a more early budget one as well. But this is not, I wouldn't super recommend this as your first character. This is more something you want to do as your second. And it's going to be a build that has a really, really high ceiling. So we are an Inquisitor. I ascended Pious Path first and then Inevitable Judgment. So Pious Path, what that does is we're going to have Consecrated Ground as long as we're not constantly moving. So if you Shield Charge or Flame Dash, etc., it'll keep it up. Um, but you need to stand still at some points. Uh, but yeah, just casting those abilities counts as standing still. That'll make your life regen to also recover Energy Shield. And uh, this actually lets us run Righteous Fire for even more spell damage later. And Righteous Providence and Inevitable Judgment is really good for crit enemies that we don't care about. Curses like Elemental Weakness, etc. So we are going to be using Assassin's Mark. We are uh, using Brands and Runebinder. So Runebinder is basically the way you can have two Brands. And Manny just let me know um, during this, which is why I do these collabs to make sure that we can have like the best information and stuff available. And the way it currently works is that Penance Brands stacks for like, if I attach two Brands to a boss and uh, if we have a lot of duration, it'll just keep building up, right? It'll be more damage, more damage, more damage, more damage. Now, technically they can do 20 stages. However, that's only if you have one. If you have two, they cap out at 10 each. And this technically might also be one of the bugs. So if they're supposed to have 20 stages each, we will literally be doubling the damage of the build. Um, because right now, Runebinder is just increasing ramp time. That means that instead of having faster casting, which I have right now, later on, you can have concentrated effect. If we include in full DPS and put Penance Brand of Dissipation at two, we do have, um, with 10 stages, we have 18 million. You can see if we have um, just one, uh, there we have a 9 million uh, at 20. So still pretty good and um, definitely worth it. So Manny, tell me a little bit about this bossing setup. What gems would you replace for Empower, Awaken Added Fire if you happen to have these gems? All right, so Empower level four is very, very strong. However, obviously very expensive. So we can just stick with the, um, the gems that are currently ticked. That's a good starting point. And power is only really worth swapping to instead of hyperfirm if it's level 4, otherwise it's about even. The Awaken added fire is not really necessary in this setup, but eventually we can replace the fist to lightning support by getting the conversion on gear instead, and then we can run the Awaken added fire. You, a reason to use added fire is the, uh, the plus one physical gems that it gets at level 5. So before level 5 it's actually not that strong, 
But if you look at like the, the hit DPS increase in POB, once it's level five, it's, it's pretty huge. So faster casting, that is mostly for uh, mapping and stuff like that because it gets a faster ramp timer. So what you might notice, like after a few seconds, it'll be doing insane damage and you'll see that the boss will be getting chunked, etc. However, early on for mapping, it might not have that much damage because the first two ticks aren't uh, as much. So this is going to make it uh, feel faster and um, smoother for clearing. Vitality on Arrogance. So we're running this on uh, Life. Righteous Fire. Um, early on, I couldn't sustain this, but eventually you'll have enough regen that you can sustain this on your energy shield. There are some swapping you can do here. So, for example, for Sanctum, I got a white gem on my weapon and I was running... I was running... Um, Hatred on my, um, was I running Zealotry? I think I was running Zealotry on my, um, Divine Blessing. And then I was running, um, Hatred as a perma one instead of Grace. Because in Sanctum, I was like, well, Grace isn't really going to do anything here. And I just wanted more damage. And it feels really nice to run Haste all the time. Like, faster everything just feels incredible. We can look at some of the gear here for Endgame and um, we'll link in the character description to both Manny's character and my character as well. So you can see what we're currently using um, for our Endgame characters. But things like this is pretty easy to get. If you buy either a Fractured Physical Spell Skill Gems or Fractured Suffixes can be really good to craft on as well. And then Spamming Essence of Woe. That's what I did to get my first one. And uh, I got incredibly lucky and I'm actually, uh, obviously the, the spell damage from the Woe Essence, high cast speed, and I had, uh, I actually naturally hit Physical Spell Skill Gems. So you see that you do want to get 100% suppression on this build. That is very important. There is a very big difference between 90 and 100% suppression. And uh, if you manage to get enough suppression that you don't need suppression on the implicit on your glove, you can get leech, which is obviously huge. And then for anoint, brand equity is really nice. And before that, you can take a mastery. Let's see, you can take this as a uh, mastery here if you take uh, runesmith with uh, two additional brands. And then later on, you can get rid of that because brand equity pretty much replaces it. Rings and amulet, etc. Obviously, the crit multi, etc. are great. However, you want to get cast speed as much as possible. So, zeal essences are awesome for crafting these. We do have some stat issues with like dex, strength, and int. However, we have loads of flasks. Pretty straightforward. Quicksilver, diamond, jade flask, granite, and uh, you can get phasing on a um, charm. Or if you don't have that, then you can use a quartz instead of a jade flask. And there are a lot of good charms for this. I'll list some of my favorites and then Manny can list some after. But some that I really liked, I got base crit when you're on full power charges. And, um, or was it just, I can't remember the wording. Maybe it was just base crit, but it was like 0 0.6 base crit. And that helped me crit cap pretty easily. And then I have another charm with power charges. Chance for power charges when you've crit. And then Manny has some here. Onslaught, on kill, and then um, if you do ailments, then you get more fast charges. Really nice for mapping. Calling strike, suppression, and charge duration. And then there's so many that which uh, was taken. Obviously, you will never get an exact one, but there's loads of really good ones. Obviously, recover life, energy, shield, mana, on kill is really, really nice. Reservation efficiency ones could be really good to further upgrade the build, but we don't actually need them for like this basic version. I usually run, as you said, Onslaught, Phasing, Frenzy on hit. Just suppression chumps to help out gearing. There's all res as well as an option to help out gearing. Charge duration is, uh, is useful. And if you guys go to the notes section, Manny has done some really good notes on uh, like examples of how you boss on the build, how you map on the build, and a few extra notes there. And both me and Manny are playing this, and Manny's been playing it a lot more in the end game. So you can drop by a stream, ask questions, and he might be able to give you some insight and uh, extra help with the build there as well. Great content creator, so make sure you check him out. Does really, really cool, really strong builds that a lot of other content creators like myself end up stealing. Here is a separate POB on more endgame gear. And um, this is like getting closer to what Manny is running now. Things like Awaken in KOE feels really good for uh, mapping. So you might not even need things like that for Sanctum or for boss farming. Like you might not need the AOE, but it will make a pretty big difference for bossing. So we can look through some super endgame gear here, like a plus two scepter, spell damage, and then you have multi multi cast speed and crit multi. Really good status garb. And for even more survival, you might have seen that Ben is running a uh, saintly chainmail, which uh, a saintly chainmail can get the up to 8% physical damage reduction. And then that's because the build doesn't have a crazy amount of damage reduction. So what I'm going to be doing is stuff like this, where I get the physical damage taken from hits, 
So maybe instead of the implicit being mana reservation, I might get a loathing helmet. So that is a shrieking or deafening essence of loathing, which is eight or 10% mana reservation. And that's something I'm going to be focusing on to just try to get as much physical damage taken as elemental because we don't have a crazy amount of armor and we don't have like an easy time getting endurance charges or physical damage reduction. So anything like that, very, very nice. On the gloves as well here, you can see that it's gone for like the further conversion. So then you can move away from the physical damage, uh, phys, phys to lightning on the gem and you get 50% conversion on a glove. Love. So that is some of the end game things that you can look for here. And then a Pendant's Brand Replica Dragon Flight, uh, Dragon Fang Amulet, Dra Dragon Fang's Flight. I always call it my Dragon Flight Amulet. And then a Death Rush for mapping is really, really good. There are some examples. And obviously Orient's End is really good for explosion. The weak point of this build is clear. You can absolutely play around with uh, Obliteration. You can play around with the Charm that does explode. If you have a Curse, then you need a Curse on hit, hit Ring, which is only going to do the explosion because we are an inquisitor so it doesn't it doesn't matter at all and uh unnatural instinct is insane here what that does is it allocates all the small ones um so that like that you don't have points in so you're getting all the aoe here you're getting all the cast speed here life regen like it's absolutely insane yeah this this doesn't really do anything for us we're also getting skill effect duration there which is huge for this build Honestly, the best spot for an unnatural instinct. You're getting so much, and thankfully, I have one. So, Manny, like, what do you think like the uh, upper end damage that we're gonna end up getting on this build is like with like pr pretty high budget? Like, it seems to have a really high ceiling. Yeah, for sure. Well, it kind of depends if we try to maximize the build for pure DPS or if we're going for all this utility like AOE, explosions, adrenaline, and so on. The pure bossing setup. Uh, offensive setup can easily reach 50 million DPS. You gotta keep in mind that this skill has perfect uptime on DPS too. We're not having to stand still and attack to deal DPS. We just apply the brands and the damage ticks while we can do whatever we want. So the damage feels higher than it, the numbers say too. So for your build at the moment, what are the main things you're working on to improve the build? Well, I'm, I'm really trying my best to get an explosion flask from, from Ubersiris. I feel like that would make the clear feel uh, much, much better than it is right now. I'm also trying to um, to make a new chest. I think aura effect is incredibly important to scale this build. So um, I want to get a new six link base to go for the, uh, the the perfect aura effect implicit there. I'm still missing a watcher's eye for my build too. So uh, there's tons of options there because we're running like what five or six auras. What are some good examples of watcher's eye that you would want to go for? I see that you have a crit one in the build here. Yeah, the the hatred base crit watcher's eye would allow us to eventually drop the increased crit strike support. Because we'll have plenty of percent crit from our ascendancy choice, the um, the righteous providence. So adding the base crit from the hatred crit watchers eye would probably allow us to skip the increased crit strike support and then run awakened added fire or awakened AOE or something constantly to further improve the damage. But awesome. yeah, we have tons of options for defensive watchers eyes as well, like determination, fist reduction, grace evasion. Yeah. Many options. Yeah, I really want to see if I can take the build even further on tankier with like maybe fitting in a, a purity of elements or a purity of fire and maybe fitting melding in and things like that, getting a little yeah. higher. Yeah, that's that's one of the ideas I'm looking into as well. Eventually going for 90 rest with the uh, the maximum fire rest charms we have this league. Sure. Or maybe an Aegis Aurora setup and stacking cold rest. We have so much damage too, so it's so easy to like drop things for defenses. Yeah, exactly. Like you can go pretty uh, creative on this. Because uh, the damage will be there, don't worry. The skill has damage no, no matter what. Yeah, and that was one of the things I noticed very early as well during the campaign. Because first I was like, oh, I'm just going to level with Armor Brand and Spec later. Because I'd heard it was so bad at clearing, but like like you saw in the background, like just the clear while doing the campaign was more than fine. And it was just deleting bosses. Absolutely amazing build. And uh, yeah, guys, go make sure you check out uh, Manny. Absolutely amazing creator. And uh, the profile name for uh, me is Zizarin. Profile name for many is Como Estoy. And we're going to put that in the description as well. And we're going to have the POBs and a leveling POB. Now, the leveling POB, I'm, it's going to be different than the uh, link starters that you're used to. So it's not going to have like budget gear, like, you know, just picking up rares off the ground. It's going to have level of uniques. Like I leveled with seven league step and things like barracks grip, barracks respite, etc., for loads of flat damage. And it just feels so amazing with that. And uh, if you, if you have some of those level uniques it's going to be an absolute dream to level and some people that have been following me from just seeing the me streaming it on twitch they're just having a blast 
So again, huge thank you to Manny for this collab. I hope you guys enjoy it. And let me know in the comments down below if you want to see more things like this. Make sure you go check him out. Give him a lot of love. Amazing creator with amazing builds. So hope you guys like this video. If you do, sub. More importantly, try to die less than I do.